exercises for fractured ankles. So if you've broken your ankle, what can you do to get it better? But first of all, we're going to look at what actually happens to your ankle, the ankle joint, the ligaments, as well as the muscles, when your, your foot is stuck in a cast or a boot. Because that will help you understand why it takes such a long time to regain all your function again. Then we're going to look at how long can you expect this whole rehab program to take. Then thirdly, we'll take a look at what exercises you can do while you're still in the boot. And lastly, what exercises you can do when you come out of the boot and how you should progress them. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want to link to our website. What happens to your body when it's immobilized in a cast or boot or anything for a period of time? Well, the first thing is it heals. And this is what we actually want, but there are other side effects as well. So for broken bones to heal, they need a period of time where they don't um, experience a lot of movement so that they can knit together. So it's important not to get anxious with this cast that you've got on and keep it on until the doctor says that it's safe to take it off. Now, the second thing that happens is you lose a bit of muscle mass. And this is purely because you don't use the muscles while it's in there and the body tend to not um, waste energy. So if it finds that you're not using a body part, it thinks, well, we can rather push the energy and the resources to other parts of the body that you are using. It's kind of similar to if you don't go to the gym for a while, you'll notice that your muscles aren't quite as toned anymore. It's just the extreme version of that. And like you know, it's also reversible, so you can build muscle again, so it's not permanent. But that's why you've got quite a skinny leg when you usually take it out of the cast. Now, thirdly, and this is an interesting one, what, we've, what they found is that it also switches off your nervous system to an extent. So when we think of the nervous system, we've got the central nervous system, which is, think of it like the control system in the brain, which determines how hard you contract a muscle or how active things are. And then you've got your peripheral nervous system, which are the nerves that actually runs into your um, legs and ankle and muscles and everything. And they have different functions. Some of them helps with muscle contraction. Some of them regulates your blood pressure. Some of them regulates your cell function but they are basically in charge of everything that happens in that area. Now, when your body part is immobilized for a period of time and it doesn't get the normal movement or sensations of normal touch that you used to, the body kind of switches the nerves off, that they go to sleep. Again, partly not to waste energy. So what you find is when you take the cast off, suddenly you may find that it's really difficult to get the muscles to work. Even just getting a simple movement of up and down with your foot can be so difficult because it's just not listening to you. And that's because the nerves in that area has gone to sleep, but also the control center in the brain that controls that part has gone to sleep a bit. Now, luckily, there are simple things that we can do to reverse this. And there are even things you can do while you're still in the cast to limit how much this happens. And I'll talk to them about them in a bit. Um, and an interesting thing with regards to this is we always assume that the loss of strength we experience after being in a cast is because you lose muscle mass. But what scientists have found is that you lose most of your strength in your muscles within the first couple of weeks of being immobilized. And that's long before you lose a significant amount of uh, muscle mass. So what they now start to think is that it's actually just the control center in the brain that goes to sleep a little bit and these nerves that's not as active, so it's not contracting or firing the muscles as quickly, that actually accounts for most of your strength losses that you experience when you're immobilized. Then you also lose a little bit of cartilage, so your cartilage becomes thinner. And the reason for this is when we think of our joints, all our, um, our joints, like our ankle joints, are covered with lovely smooth cartilage that makes them smooth to move. But joints don't have arteries going in and out of them. So they rely on movement to get fluid into the joint and nutrients and oxygen into the joint, uh, oxygen into the joint and the cartilage, and also all the toxins back out. So if your ankle is now stuck in a position and you're not getting a lot of movement in there, it's very difficult for the cartilage to get all the things it needs to be healthy. 
and that's why you get a thinning effect in there. Again, this is totally, um, you can turn this around when it comes out of the, the boot or the, the cast, but this is why you may find if you're too aggressive with your exercises or load your ankle joint too quickly, it can become quite painful because it takes several weeks for this cartilage to become healthy and strong and robust again. And that's why it's, it's important to ease into your rehab. And then lastly, if we think of joints, you've got thick capsules that's kind of sinewy white. Think of them like really thick ligaments surrounding the joints. And you also have ligaments, of course, next to the joint. And all of these structures become a bit stiff and they lose a bit of their strength even sometimes um, because of their mobilization. But all of this can be turned around again through rehab, which we'll talk about in a minute. How long will it take for your broken ankle to heal? Roughly 24 weeks to get from the moment that you go into the cast to the moment where you're actually strong again and have your full range and go back to sport. There's a bit of variation with regards to this and I'll talk about this in a moment. Interestingly enough, the bones themselves take only about 12 weeks to fully knit together. The rest of the time is needed to get your full range of motion back, your full muscle strength back and turn around all the negative effects of being immobilized in a cast. So let's look at the time frames if we split it up. The first stage, if I divide fracture rehab into about or healing into three rough stages, we're looking at stage one where it is how long does it take for the bones to knit together and that's roughly six weeks. Now at this point they knit it together if you look at them on x-rays you can see that there's um, bone growing in between them but they're not strong yet. So during this period, it's still easy to re-injure and refracture, and you will be in a cast or boot for the full period of this period of time, the first six, six weeks. Then it takes another six weeks for that fracture area to now consolidate and become stronger than before even. And this period of time can be a little bit shorter, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on how well you heal. So you'll find that your doctor will likely ask you to wear that cast for anything between 10 to 12 weeks, sometimes a little bit longer, but not often. Um, so by the end of 12 weeks, you usually get to a point where the fracture has now fully healed, but now you're stuck with an ankle that's stiff, muscles that's not quite working properly, and that now has to turn around. And that period of time that it takes to get your full strength back takes roughly another 12 weeks. Because remember, it's not just about getting it flexible again. You have to regain your control. That cartilage that's ha have gone a bit thinner, that has to now become thicker and healthy again. And cartilage is very slow in healing or recovering. Same thing with the ligaments. If you injure tendons, they have to repair again. So there's a lot of soft tissue changes that needs to happen. And the body just repairs at a certain amount of time. Of course, also, there are certain injuries that um, will delay your healing time. So if you had any injuries inside the joint itself, for instance, lots of bone bruising or even cartilage injuries inside the joint, that may mean that you take a bit longer than the 24 weeks to heal still. It all depends and your physio will help advise you on how long yours will take. There are exercises that you can do while your foot is in the boot that can help you limit the amount of muscle mass you lose, as well as keep your nervous system awake. Now, it's really important that you ask your doctor or your physiotherapist if it's safe for you to do these exercises before you try them, because it may just be that your fracture needs a little bit more time to settle before you start with it. <clears throat> so the first is pretty simple. It's just moving your toes. Now, that simple action can help to keep some action going in the muscles that support your foot arch so it can help keep them strong. It helps with circulation and it also helps to keep the nervous system active so that it's easier for you to move your foot and your toes and everything when you come out of the boot. Now, the second thing you can do is going to sound a little bit bonkers and this is that you can exercise your opposite leg and that will actually help to keep your leg that's in the cast strong and prevent it from, lo from losing as much muscle mass. Now, how does this work? 
Scientists think that this is because our nervous system works a little bit like a mirror. Now, remember when we spoke about what happens in your ankle when it's stuck in a boot, that the nervous system goes to sleep and that that is one of the major reasons why you lose your muscle strength. So what happens is if you exercise the muscles that's in the same area of the body, but on the opposite side of the body, so outside the cast, it activates the central nervous system or the control system in the brain of that part. But it also activates the opposite part of the side that's in the boot. So what they found was that for people where they put them in a cast for several weeks and control group does no exercise, the other group, they make them train the opposite limb while this one's in a cast, they found that they lose less muscle mass and the muscles are stronger when they come out of the cast. So this is something you can do. But I will say, just be careful. If your opposite leg is already tired and your knee may even be sore and your hip even be a bit sore because you're putting so much weight on that side being on crutches, then go, don't go and train it too hard. Use exercises that don't really strain it that much. So things like isometrics or perhaps even just balancing exercises or exercise the muscles that don't feel that tired. So just be gentle with it. If your uninjured side is already feeling really tired, it may not be the time to really hammer it um, with heavy exercises. And then a point that follows into that is it's the perfect time to keep the rest of the body strong. Remember that core stability and especially strength and control around the hips influences what happens in the rest of the legs as well. So if you can have really good control around your legs, it takes some of the strain off your ankle. Whereas if you have poor control over, around your hips, it can make your force even more effort onto your foot and make it turn even in even more. But when you choose your exercises, choose them well. Choose things that don't strain your cast or your, your injured part. So if we think of core exercises, things like sit-ups, uh, Russian twists, planks done on your, on your knees rather than your feet, um, clams, side leg lifts. You can even strengthen your quads by just sitting in the chair and straightening that injured leg out so that the, the weight of the, the cast is very good exercise for it. Or if you want to train your hamstrings, you can be standing up and just curl your, your foot to your bottom and do hamstring curls that way. So that's a good way to strengthen it as well. When you first come out of the boot, you can expect that ankle and calf area to feel really strange. It'll likely look very skinny because it lost some muscle mass, but it just won't feel like your leg. And you may find it really hard to just do simple movements. And that's because the nerves go to sleep a little bit. So what we look to do in rehab is one, we want to get it used to weight bearing again and build that weight bearing capacity. Second, we want to do exercises that actually stimulates the nervous system and trains that, wakes it up and gets the control back into that. Then we want to improve muscle strength. We want to improve the mobility in the ankle so that it can move as far as it should. And lastly, we also want to strengthen the rest of the body. So let's look at each of those on its own. So if we think of load bearing capacity, why is this important? Well, the whole 12 weeks or 10 weeks, depending on how long you've been in the cast, you've now had external support for your foot. So the muscles in your foot that supports your arch, as well as the ligaments, have gotten a little bit weaker. Now, if you take that cast away and you stand for long periods of time on it, it just won't have the endurance to deal with all that load going through it. So it's very easy to strain your foot. And I've, I've seen people get conditions like plantar fasciitis um, or just tendinopathies of the, the tip post tendon especially, all the tendons that support the ankle if they overdo the walking and the weight bearing initially. So the most important thing is when you take it out of the cast or out of a boot, put it in a supportive shoe. Running shoes are brilliant for this and especially if you put a little bit of an arch support in the running shoe that can just give it that little bit of extra support while you wake the muscles up and get them working again. And then secondly, even with supportive shoes, you still have to limit the amount of time you spend on your feet at the beginning. 
So you want to start with short periods of standing and walking interspersed with periods of rest. And something that is quite useful is, especially at the beginning, to take a couple of hours in the afternoon and just sit with your feet up, allow them to recover, allow them to rest, and then get going again. So that's really important if you don't want to end up having other injuries because you overdo the load bearing at the beginning. If we move on to exercises that train the nervous system. So remember, it's the little nerves in your leg that goes to sleep, but also the control centrum in the brain that goes to sleep. And that's part of the reason why you lose some of your muscle strength. But something else that happens is, you know when you close your eyes, you know exactly where your fingers are, your toes are, you can feel, I know that I'm moving my hands up and down even though I'm not looking at them. And that's because of proprioception or position sense. So there are loads of little receptors in your joints, in your tendons, in your muscles that constantly give feedback to your brain about where your body parts are in time and space, how fast they're moving, what direction they're pointing in. And this is what allows you to walk without having to look at your feet. If you just think about how amazing it actually is that you can run downstairs and not trip over, your brain just knows where you're going. Now, the problem is when you've been stuck in a boot and the nerves have gone to sleep a little bit and you've had an injury, which also disturbs the nerve endings, that position sense gets interrupted. So now your brain don't quite know where your body is and it's difficult for it to control it. So you have to retrain that as well. The good news is, even though this all sounds a bit complicated, it's actually extremely easy to retrain all of this. And the first thing is, you don't need special exercises. It's more about how you do the exercises you do for your strength training, in any case, that will retrain that. So what they found is, if you do your strength training exercises really slowly and controlled, and you focus on how your body part is moving, so instead of thinking, Oh, I want to go shopping. I want to do this tomorrow while you're doing your exercises. But now you focus on it, then you really activate that pathway again. So if we take heel raises as an example, because it's a common exercise people do for angle rehab, where you go up on your toes and back down. What you want to do to do that mindfully is you want to look down at your feet and you want to go up slowly, take about three seconds and then control it really slowly back down, that it takes you roughly three seconds to get down. And you can even make it even um, more difficult to control by saying, okay, I'm going to go halfway down, stop, come back up, go down again. And the idea here is, yes, you get strength from it, but you also force your body to move in the line you want to move it in. So this applies to all exercises, whether you're doing turning the foot out, turning the foot in, up, down, whatever you want to do, it has to go in the direction you want it to go in. If you're standing on a balance board, you want to be tilting it in straight lines, for instance. It's not okay if it goes boom, because then you don't have control over it. So especially for the first few weeks, it's all about that slow control. The second type of thing you can do to build your position sense um, for the brain and get the control are balancing exercises. Now, usually when I say balancing exercises, people think, oh, standing on one leg or standing on a balance board. But please don't try that initially because you'll likely fall off it. When you first come out of a, a cast, the most difficult thing you can do is just trying to put your weight on it, even on two feet, because you'll find that your brain tends to think, this is the midline. And meantime, that's all your weight on your good side. So just getting your balance that it's equal is where you start with balance exercises. Then you go into things like tandem stance, where you're on two feet in front of each other and work on different things like moving your head or your body to just challenge yourself in that position. And only then you move on to single leg things on the floor. And only once you're very good with single leg balance on the floor, can you start thinking about about being on balance boards and more unstable things. But this is why it's useful to work with a physio, because like you can see, there's no, oh, do this exercise and this is what you should be doing. You start with something, but then as you progress, you need to make it more difficult to eventually achieve the level you need for the activities you want to do. And that will depend on the sport you do. 
So the level of balance required for somebody who just wants to go walking is very different compared to somebody who wants to do jumping sports or skiing or tennis playing. The level of control there is so much higher. So what exercises you do has to marry up with the activities you want to eventually achieve. So if we think of range of motion, and this is the thing that usually um, people focus on most, especially at the beginning, because the ankle feels so stiff. It's good to use your opposite side, the side that's not injured, as a gauge for what your injured side should be able to do eventually. Now, not everybody will get their full range of motion back, because sometimes you'll have a break that just changes the shapes of the bones that can't go fully back. But um, it's always good to just gently, gently work and see where you can get to. So the ranges of motion is pulling the toes up into dorsiflexion, pointing them down into plantar flexion, turning the feet in, turning the feet out. You always have more range of motion with turning the feet in than you have with turning it out. And how much it should bend up or point down is relevant or relative to what your body, body naturally do. So it's important not to try and look at somebody else, how flexible they are, and decide what you should be able to do. That's why it's good to use your opposite limb. What I find is doing strong sustained stretches into end ranges of motion is not that great because it often ends up irritating the joint. Remember the cartilage is quite sensitive at the start as well. So if you're doing lots of strong stretches, squashing the cartilage, it's very easy to flare it up and make it inflamed and painful. So I find a better method tends to be active stretching, where you go into a position, into the restriction, feel the restriction, hold it for a few seconds, and then move back out. Move back in, hold it, hold it, move back out. So that you use movement into end ranges, but not pushing as far as you can, holding it there, to get your range of motion. And I find little bits often throughout the day works much better than just doing one or two big sessions that really puts you into pain. Um, but that's just my preference. So if we think of what exercises to do, it is literally just all of those ranges of motion you want to work on. And you usually start with low load stretches. So for instance, if we take the dorsiflexion, pulling the ankle up motion um, to start with, it's good to start with that just in sitting, just getting that range of motion, getting comfortable into it, pulling your legs underneath the chair, but to get more of that range and then moving into standing kind of trying the knee to wall stretch, getting your knee to move towards the wall while your heel stays flat on the floor, or the typical runner step stretch, or even later on dipping the heels slightly over the side of a step to feel a bit of a stretch and then coming back up with that. There are plenty of different ways that you can stretch and your physio can help you decide what's the best way for you. But what I will say is do not be too aggressive, especially at the start, rather go for little bits often. Ankle fracture rehab with regards to strength training gets broken up into several different stages. So the initial stage is just about getting your base function, your base strength in all the muscles. So we're thinking of the muscles that pull your foot up, the muscles that turn them in, the muscles that turning them out, and the ones pointing it down. But also the little muscles inside your foot so your intrinsic foot muscles that um, support your arch. Then later on, when these are strengthened, you have to put it into more global exercises that combines it with things like lunges or more dynamic type exercises, where even you, you work up to plyometrics eventually. Now, when you first come out of your boot or your, your cast, you will find that that foot just doesn't want to do anything. Even just the act of trying to get it turning in can be so difficult because it's just stupid. It doesn't know how to do it. At that stage, it can be really useful to use isometric movements. Now, isometric movements is where you contract a muscle, but the joint stays in, in one position. So, for instance, it would be pushing your foot in against a wall or pushing it out against a wall or pushing it down against a wall, but nothing's actually moving, that you just get the muscles to contract for 10 seconds at a time, release. 10 seconds at a time, release. Because that starts to stimulate the nervous system. 
Then you start trying to move it gently and slowly and controlled into different positions. So just free active, we're not using any resistance yet, but you're looking to get whatever your uninjured side can do, your injured side is trying to do as well. And only after that do you start adding in resistance bands, for instance, where you push against the resistance band down or pull up against it or in or out. And then from there on, you go on to higher resistance exercises that's a little bit more complex. Now, if I can take you through just one type of exercise, if we look at strengthening the calf muscles and the, the lifting up action, typically you'll start with exercises just in sitting, getting used to low load, lifting up on your toes and control down. And you may find when you try that slow lowering down that it goes boom, 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 all shuddering. And that's because the brain's going, oh, oh, I don't quite know how to do this movement smoothly. So it can be really useful to just start with that. And you can do it often during the day because it's not a high load exercise. Then from there, you'll move on to standing double leg exercises, where again, you're holding on for balance. It's nice and stable and you're just doing what you can do. If it hurts to lift all the way up, you just go to where it doesn't hurt. So you do it in the range of motion that you have available. That then gets progressed eventually to either single leg or over the side of a step or even with extra weight on it. Um, it just depends on what stage of rehab you're in. And you've, if you're doing sports where you're running or jumping, you also have to add in plyometrics where you're going to be jumping and hopping that you can teach your brain how to do that landing action um, and the quick push off actions again because that's what you need to be controlling um, when you do your sport. And hand in hand goes strengthening up the rest of the body as well, because our bodies work as kinetic change. So you have to make sure that every part of the body has got the range of motion it requires. You don't have to be super flexible. It just needs a basic range of motion and it needs its basic strength. So it's good to make sure that all parts are strong and that you're not just fo focusing on your ankle. But then an important part in all of this rehab is to get you back into your sport. So once you've got your strength, you've got your control to a level that you need for your sport, you then have to ease back into sport. And that is often the part where the wheels come off because people go back too quickly. So when they go back to running, they want to immediately run two kilometers. Whereas actually, running is much higher load than what just doing the exercises was. So it's a good thing to get into run walks, for instance. Or if you do a, a, a sport like basketball, you'd want to start by playing just five minutes at a time, perhaps not full contact even, or just training with the team for, for a portion of the time, that you take several weeks to ease back into your full sport. Something that can be quite useful during this time is if you also add in cross training and brilliant cross training for ankle rehab is cycling because you get a lot of motion so the joint gets fed but you don't have a lot of impact in that so that can be a good thing to kind of get your cardiovascular fitness up in the meantime so in summary your exercise for when you come out of the boot has to be multifaceted it's got to look at your load management during the day how much time you spend on your feet it's got to focus on getting your brain to connect to that body part. It's got to involve getting your full range of motion back again, strengthening the muscles local to that area, but combining it with other mo mobility exercises like plyometrics and lunges and things eventually. And you've got to train it up to the level you need for your sport to then be able to ease back into it. Brilliant. Hope you found that useful. And let me know if you've got any questions. And if you need more help with an injury, you're welcome to consult one of us via video call. The link to the website is in the description of this video. Take care.